Coming up on the show, I'm speaking to the CEO of Mercedes about car keys of the future. Also, a James Bond car is up for auction and I got my new car. That's coming up. All right, what's up guys? It's Supercar Blondie here. Welcome to The Hangout. Oh, babe, you didn't mix it. Oh, gross. Oh well, she'll do. All right, let's get going, car news. First up, a James Bond car. Wait, I'm spitting at you. One of the cars used in Spectre the movie is now up for auction this month. They use 10 bespoke Land Rover Defenders in the movie as getaway cars. Only seven of these still exist. One of these babies is now up for auction and it's been fully customized. 37 inch wheels, plus a full roll cage and an upgraded engine. Okay, take your hand over. We've got a new department called Special Vehicle Operations to build bespoke vehicles for customers, for clients. And it's actually that team that have worked on these vehicles. Land Rovers and the Range Rovers had a particularly bruising time. They've really been tested to their limits in deep snow, ice, some very extreme driving. So we really had to make sure that they were fit for purpose and they came through with flying colours. You can check that out on the Silverstone auction and that's taking place on the 23rd of May. Right, next up in car news, a super rare car has been found discarded in a barn in the US. It's the 300 SL Roadster and it was actually hidden away for 40 years. Known as the Gullwing Mercedes, it's actually one of the most collectible cars on the market today. And get this, the person who found it sold it for nearly $1.1 million. What a find. Lastly, you guys, I don't know about you, but I'm missing my car shows. Lots of us used to get out every weekend, go down to the local cars and coffee and check out people's cars. That isn't happening anymore. But what's cool is I've kind of a few places have taken these car shows online. One of those places is the Peterson Museum. That's in LA. I actually visited them last year. They have one of the most exclusive car collections in the world. It is amazing. Like they have a vault downstairs, an actual vault, right? With the vault door that you have to unlock and get special access to go through and see these cars. In. They've got bodyguards for the cars here. Yeah. These cars are hugely protected. Um, there are over 200 cars in these stores. I mean, what, what this used to be is just this space here up until that first wall that you can see. They have one of the most exclusive car collections in the world. Let's start with movie cars, TV and movie cars. This is the original car from the Green Hornet. This one from Die Another Day. This is the evil dude's car. Pope Mobile. Now, The interesting thing about this car is that the Pope, it was made for the Pope, but he never actually rode in it because there's no cover for him, but it has been officially blessed by the Pope. This is an official Pope mobile. This is the very last car that Bobby Kennedy drove in before his assassination. was owned by Steve McQueen and there are some predictions that this could be the most valuable car in the collection. I mean it always depends on what someone is willing to pay for a car right but about 40 million dollars is the guess. This year the first ever Ferrari built. This is a 1.5 litre V12.
they have taken their cars and coffee meetings online. And actually, you guys can be a part of these meets. What they're looking for is for you guys to send in a video about 20 to 30 seconds long. You just head out the back, round to your car and go, this is my car. Show people what you love about your car and you could actually be featured in the online show. That's pretty cool. I got a new car, guys. Super excited. And I'm looking at wraps for it. Uh, what do you guys think of this one? Okay, maybe not. I've had a few people reach out to me to customize it. West Coast Customs reached out just today and said, hey, let's do something crazy. Not sure if I want to go like that crazy with it. They're known for the guys behind the show, Pimp My Ride. You've got to pimp my ride. I don't know if I'm keen to have like a fish tank and like a subwoofer in the back of my Rolls Royce. Uh, but let's see what ideas they come up with. It might be kind of cool. Right, in today's interview, guys, I'm really excited about this. We are crossing to someone who's kind of a big deal in the car industry, the CEO and chairman of Mercedes. This is Ola. All right, here we are. Hi, Ola, how are you? Good, how are you doing? So nice to see you, I'm doing so well. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. It looks like you're not at home anymore. Are you back at work? Yes, I am back at work. Actually, today I'm talking to you from the Mercedes-Benz Museum here in Stuttgart. So are you guys back up and running now? In some of our plants, we're back up and running because some markets uh, are starting to uh, gain some traction again. So everywhere where we have demand, and most of our dealers are open around the world. Although in this COVID uh, very unusual situation, uh, customers are still hesitant. Yeah, we're now kind of looking to China a little bit in that they're one of the first countries really to start opening up again fully. What are you seeing over there? Is, is demand kind of back up to where it was? We just have the month of April behind us and that was a pretty strong month and mm -hmm. our production plants are more or less uh, back to normal in China again. So you guys are kind of back up and running at some of your plants, which is exciting because there are a few cars coming out that I'm personally excited about. I know a lot of people watching this channel are excited about the Project One. What are you most excited about? One of the great things in the job that I have is I, I get to drive a lot of prototypes. And yesterday was one of those days. We have a fantastic test track just an hour south of Stuttgart. And I spent the yeah. whole day driving everything that we have in the pipeline. So it's difficult to pick one, you know, which one of your children do you love most? You have to say everybody. But you always love one child more, right? If we're, if we're totally uh, well, honest. then, inofficially then, let's give you three favorites. Well, you mentioned the Project, uh, project One AMG Hypercar. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. So that, that has to be on the list. This is the year. Uh, where we launched the next generation S-Class, which has always been our flagship car. It will get, uh, let's call it a sibling, here, which will be the so-called EQS. Okay, so yep. a fully okay. battery electric uh, version of the S-Class, if you will. Are you personally excited about the direction that we're going in when it comes to electric cars? I'm very excited about yeah. electric cars. If we go all the way back, our founding fathers, they invented this industry. Carl Benz and Gottlieb Daimler inventing the first car. In my own career at Daimler, I spent time at AMG and I even had the good fortune to work in uh, 
Formula One as well, so I appreciate the love for a really sophisticated combustion engine. But we're at the crossroads now where we have to reinvent the original invention. I, I suppose a lot of people know this, but some people watching might not. You're a Swede and you're heading up a German auto manufacturer. Um, are you still hanging out for your dream job at Volvo? Uh, not really. <laughs> uh, we did have a Volvo in the family when I grew up, which really? was normal in Sweden. Did you have IKEA furniture? I, I had IKEA furniture. Every suite has some piece of IKEA furniture in the room, and I still have that today. Uh, but that uh, that three pointed star is what what fascinated me as a kid. Yeah. Uh, and I found my purpose here. So this is this is where I where I belong and where I want to stay. Even though I respect what they're doing up in Sweden as well. So you've been there, as you said, three decades. Now looking forward three decades. I see the AVTR uh, just over your shoulder there. Um, I was lucky enough to see it in person. It's absolutely amazing. I love the back, how it kind of opens up and dances around. Do you think we'll actually see a car like that 30 years from now on the roads? I think maybe that car in itself is a few years out, but many of the technologies that we presented with this vehicle, uh, they will come even down to something that we're working on in our research department is an organic based battery chemistry that could be compostable. So uh, this whole thing about uh, uh, bringing technology and nature in harmony, which is also somewhat the underlying message of the Avatar movie, not all of that is science fiction. There is some uh, true core, some true research and engineering core uh, to things that we presented with this vehicle earlier this year. So once you're done with the battery, you just throw it in with the carrots and the, and the banana peels in the compost? Almost. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to see that. Hey, I want to show you something, Ola. Um, this is a key. It's actually been designed by, it's a graphic designer, so it's not real, but I want you to see this and just get your thoughts on whether or not we might be seeing keys like this in future. See how you can start the engine from the key, play around with the doors, drive off with the, from the key. Are we ever going to see keys like this? Absolutely, but what I think also will be coming in a not too distant future is uh, your voice is your key. So you can just speak to your car. You can already speak to the car inside the car. You know that right. and we have natural language understanding in Mercedes and it works phenomenally well. Uh, yeah. I think we're going to see that move outside of the car in the future and you maybe just summon your car oh, that's uh, cool. like that's the cool. old uh, uh, series with, uh, with Kit. Oh, uh, the car yes. that was a robot car oh, with David man. Hasselhoff. That would be so awesome. I got to drive Kit actually through London. That was amazing and it started speaking to everyone as they were having beers at the pub. You should have seen their faces. It was so cool. A lot of people are working from home now. I mean, some people have been forced to and others choose to work from home. Do you think that there's going to be less demand for cars or the use of cars? now that a lot of people are used to working from home and they won't actually go back to work and they won't need that commute? Yes, I believe in more home working and so on. What I don't think is that people are going to want to limit their uh, freedom of movement. So mm -hmm. the need for, for a car is still going to be there. And, and maybe to have your own protected space that belongs to you uh, uh, with this unfortunate uh, event that we're living through now, that, that uh, own space, protected space that belongs to you maybe also becomes more important, which speaks for uh, uh, using the car and your individual car uh, to a degree even more. I know that a lot of car companies have had to uh, manufacture uh, personal protective gear for hospitals, etc., face shields. You've been doing that at Mercedes as well. Going forward, now that you've got your production kind of back up and running, are you able to still do that on the side, manufacture PPE and also uh, cars? We have all tackled this together. Perhaps the most spectacular project was in less than 100 hours, our quote unquote idle Formula One engineers that could not go racing, they re-engineered a relatively simple ventilator and yeah. uh, put the first prototype through our uh, Formula One factory uh, in four days time. And we have now produced more than 10,000 of those. 
That's incredible. Some of this work, I think, will continue. Uh, but of course, we're eager to get back into to car production, car and truck production, which is what the company is all about. Is there going to be any change to your strategy now that you guys have had a little bit of time to step back and look at how to reopen production? Are there any cars that are going to be put uh, back or on hold for a little bit longer or any cars that you're going to push to the forefront faster than you had expected before coronavirus hit? Even though we're, of course, uh, in a situation where we have some restrictions and the whole financial picture has changed because of the demand shock that COVID-19 right. has, right. has caused, uh, it's very important for us to, at the same time, manage the future. So all our important and strategic, strategic product projects that are in the pipeline, uh, we have more or less been able to keep them uh, on track, which is a good thing. So many of the EV cars that are in the pipeline as well uh, all of them are coming, so we haven't pushed too many things back. Let me just finish with you uh, with this little game. It's guess your car. We're going to see how well you know your Mercedes by their rims. Okay? Okay. <laughs> okay. I love rims. I should be able to make this. We all love rims. Can you guess which car this rim belongs to? Well, this first one is easy, and you mentioned it at the beginning of this talk. <laughs> It's the AMG Project One. You got it. I you mean, got it. How, cra how crazy is that car? Formula One powertrain in a road car. We're actually doing it. And, uh, uh, and I saw one of those prototypes drive by me yesterday at the track. So wow. it's coming. What car does this rim belong to? Well, here's a clue. You see the copper color. Yeah. So it's an electric yeah. car. Okay. Uh, the rim is a fantasy rim. So here's a show car. I would say it's the electric silver arrow show car. <laughs> Damn, we can't trick him up. Okay, there you go. Yes, that's the one. Okay, next. Uh, here, this could be a trick question. It looks like the turbine wheel of the original SLR that we did together between Mercedes AMG and McLaren. Right. But it's not. It's not. It's another show car uh, and it's luxury. It's a Maybach, a sport <laughs> utility sedan that we showed. Yes. Okay, last, last one. Here we go. Uh, which car does this one belong to? I mentioned, I think, that I worked at AMG. This is actually not a real car. Okay, yeah. We did a digital fantasy car for the PlayStation game Gran Turismo. Ah, yes. And this, yes. Is, this is that car. Oh, man, you're too good. All right, there you go. You can keep your job at, uh, at Mercedes for a bit longer there, Ola. We're impressed. Well, well, thank you. If that's the only test I need to pass, I think I'm in good shape. That's it. That's all you need to pass to be CEO. It's really that easy, isn't it? Yeah, I guess. Thank you so, so much for coming on the show with us. It's been such a pleasure. Well, Alex, uh, thanks for having me. Next time on the other side of COVID, uh, we'll give you some fun products to test. Love Maybe it. that AMG Project One is something that would fit in well to your show. We'll see what we can do. Virtual handshake. Virtual handshake. It's okay, a deal. Good. It's a deal. All right, Ola. That's awesome. Thank you so much and good luck with all of your uh, restart and let us know what's happening with the company and we'll stay across it. Thank you and take care and be safe. Bye. Love you so much. Thank you so, so much for watching The Hangout. Join me next time on the show. We've got so much cool stuff coming. Subscribe to my account if you haven't yet. Lots and lots of love to you. Bye. I'm out. See ya. Bobby! Bobby! Mm.